Hyperion. Terminator. There's more to Skybolt than just those two weapons. I'm talking about a weapon that's obtained from the depths of dungeons. A weapon reserved only for Skyblock's Elite. Today, we take a look at this bad boy. It is the one, the only, the Dark Claymore. The only long sword on the game, only obtainable from the depths of Master Mode Floor 7. So, now that's out of the way. The Dark Claymore is a weapon only obtainable from the Bedrock Chest within Master Mode Floor 7. The Dark Claymore's base stats are as following, plus 500 damage, plus 100 strength, plus 30% crit damage, and also plus 5 swing range. After all, this isn't just a sword. This is a long sword. Well, there you go. And there you go. That's the difference. However, what's the point in testing a weapon if you've got nothing to compare it to? We're going to be comparing this Dark Claymore to this giant sword. Now, I'm just going to be honest. Realistically, a Dark Claymore is basically same as a giant sword, just better. If we look at the stats that the Claymore gives, it gives damage, strength and crit damage and the swing range. The giant sword gives exactly the same other than the swing range. Now in both scenarios, both weapons are withered and both weapons have fuming potato books on. Our damage on the Dark Claymore is plus 580 compared to our giant sword which is exactly the same. Our strength on the Dark Claymore is plus 360 in comparison to the giant sword's 250, so that's substantially more. The crit damage on the Dark Claymore is 103 as opposed to 70 on the giant sword. But what's the price difference? Well for this Dark Claymore I paid 600 million coins, and for this giant sword I paid 310 million coins. So that means that this Dark Claymore is 290 million coins more expensive than this Giant Sword, almost about double the price. A clean Claymore is 521 mil, and a clean Giant Sword is 253 mil. I'm not going to waste any more time, and we're going to do a damage test. Now, I would use a Golden Dragon to test the damage, but because of, um, well, how many coins I've spent, I've eaten into my um, 1 billion bank a little bit. Massively. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, test the damage with this level 100 tier boosted legendary and dragon pet rather than the golden dragon pet. So the first thing I'm going to do is test our giant sword out. And the giant sword is going to deal around 701k damage. About 700k. As opposed to our dark claymore which is going to deal, didn't quite catch that, 783k. Honestly the difference is really quite underwhelming. Well that's on phase value at least. Now. The enchantments on these two swords are pretty much as similar as I could get when buying two swords off the auction house. Of course the Claymore has two Master Stars, but that's irrelevant at the moment. Everything else is pretty similar. Of course, like I mentioned before, the Dark Claymore can hit mobs from further away. Honestly, not having used this sword before, it's really quite strange being able to hit mobs that you would never really be able to hit from such a distance away. But is that really that useful? Hmm. Now before we go any further, you should subscribe to the channel, become part of the 24%. Also, you should join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of every single video. Now of course these two weapons have Soul Eater on them, so their damage is going to scale. So basically the more damage that you deal, the difference is going to seem greater, even though it's going to scale the same. So perhaps if we um, hit a high health mob like a, a Crypt Ghoul, our Giant Sword is now dealing 765k damage, is that? Yeah, around about 765 as opposed to our Dark Claymore, which is going to deal 847. Still, not a massive difference if I'm being completely honest. So now we're going to move on to some Ghosts. Just purely because, well, people farm Ghosts quite a lot with both a Giant Sword and Dark Claymore. So with our Giant Sword, we're going to be dealing around about 940k damage. Is that 940? Let's see if we can get anything. 128. It's about 940, I think, by the looks of it. Yeah, about 940. And with our Dark Claymore, we deal around about 1,030,000k damage. Which, honestly, is really underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. I really thought... I mean, obviously, looking at the stats, you can see there's probably not going to be a massive difference. But even in practice, I thought it would be a bigger difference. And honestly, yeah, it is kind of disappointing. So against Ghosts, there's approximately a 9.5% damage increase between the Giant Sword and the Claymore. Bearing in mind, you've paid, what, 300 million coins more. So I've decided to come to the end. Considering that we're using an Ender Dragon pet, we're going to test our damage with the Giant Sword, and it's around about 1.85 million. That's not too bad at all. Pretty decent damage, quite solid. Yeah, not too bad. If we switch to our Dark Claymore, um, we're now dealing 2 million damage. Around about that. But once again, it's around about... 10% increase in damage which seems pretty consistent 
Now, the big question that you you really got to ask yourself is, are you okay basically paying twice as much for a weapon that deals 10% more damage? And I guess the answer to that question just depends on where you're up to in the game. Of course, if you use the Dark Claymore, you must be cat of 36 and you must have an M7 completion, which means you must be somewhat decently progressed into the game anyway. What are the uses for this weapon? Basically, you take anything that you would use a giant sword for and just apply it to the Dark Claymore, because essentially, what we have here is just a better giant sword. After all, it is one of the highest melee damaging weapons on the game, so anything that requires you to do a lot of damage is going to be useful for. However, that's not consistent throughout dungeons. You see, if you use a Dark Claymore as a melee damaging weapon in dungeons, yes, it's going to do damage. It's not what you should do, though. You see, realistically, if you're using a melee damaging weapon within dungeons, you're probably going to be a Berserk. And for a Berserk weapon to be good, it needs to have a high crit damage stat. The Giant Sword and the Dark Claymore both fail on that department. So, believe it or not, these both of these weapons are mage weapons. The left click mage weapons. Which is fine, but realistically, to make these two weapons actually good, in terms of left click mage, you're going to need to be a really high catacombs level. You see, at that point, you've got to think, well... If I'm paying, you know, between six and 700 million coins to not even a great Claymore, just a decent Claymore, would it not just be worth paying a few hundred million more coins to get a Valkyrie? Even with a Valkyrie, you can use it as a Berserk weapon within dungeons to deal melee damage. Of course, its base ferocity is pretty ridiculous as well. Pair that with something like a Tiger Pet and you're going to be dealing a ton of damage. I guess that's something to think about. So here's my take on the Dark Claymore. Now, it's a good weapon. Um, it's obviously better than the Giant Sword. However, in majority of situations, I'm not sure whether the difference justifies 300 million coins. If you're debating buying a Dark Claymore, I'd say, first of all, buy a Giant Sword. If you feel like you could benefit from 10% extra damage, then upgrade to a Dark Claymore. And if not, then don't upgrade. If you're doing just fine with the Giant Sword and you don't really need to deal any more damage and you can manage with the Giant Sword, then I'd say take those 300 million coins that you would have spent on upgrading the Giant Sword to a Dark Claymore and just invest them into something else. Upgrade something else. It makes more sense to me. Now, if I'm being honest, I've never tried a Dark Claymore before today. To be honest, I only got my M7 completion today. I asked people who have previously used Dark Claymores what they thought of it and they had pretty much the same reaction as me and it's just a little bit underwhelming. After all, it's dropped from the hardest dungeon floor possible. M7 is really difficult, especially when you're a relatively low cutter. I couldn't survive at all, as you can probably imagine. I would just think from such a high floor and, you know, the difficulty of actually completing that floor, the weapon that you get may be a little bit better than we have. But anyway, I think that just about wraps up today's video. I hope you all have enjoyed. If you have, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.